Some of the uh, concerns are religious concerns, so sometimes it feels uh, difficult to uh, understand the poem. But however, it is a very simple and an interesting poem if you go through it uh, uh, in a better manner. Right, so um, first of all, we need to talk something about uh, John Donne. So John Donne is uh, one of the uh, prominent poets in the history of literature. So here I have written uh, one of the uh, prominent religious devotional poems of John Donne. This is the Holy Sonnet, and uh, this is number 14, actually, uh, because Holy Sonnets are there uh, with uh, So uh, this is sonnet number 14 and uh, so actually when we talk about this uh, poet, he, is a, uh, he was an Anglican priest and earlier he was having a kind of uh, uh, amorous background. He wrote some, uh, because uh, this is, he was in 16th century, he's a 16th century poet. And uh, he actually uh, deviated the tradition of Elizabethan era. In Elizabethan era, uh, there were a lot of exaggerations on women. There were a lot of exaggerations on women, but uh, uh, that was, we also call it as the Petrarchan uh, mode. So John Dunn deviated from Petrarchan mode. The best example is uh, go and touch a calling stuff. So, this is a kind of a holy poem. Now, as you hear the word holy sonnet, you feel that this seems to be, uh, this should be a religious, this has a religious impact on this poem. So, uh, obviously, it is a religious poem that is called holy sonnet. And the most, the unfortunate thing here is uh, most of his sonnets, John Donne's sonnets, were published after his death. So when he was alive, uh, we couldn't see, uh, we couldn't, the, the, uh, his poems were not actually published. Most of his poems were not actually published. So, uh, however, after his death also, uh, his work was were published and uh, it was, you uh, know, even we are studying them, that means uh, he's a great poet. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, about John Donne. And uh, I have, uh, I mean, yeah. So when we come to the poem, come to this poem, back in my heart, this is a religious poem. And uh, as I have written, one of the prominent religious or devotional poems of John Dunn. So John Dunn later became a, uh, John Dunn later became a uh, Anglican priest as well but in this poem we can see how he has been deviated from god and uh, how he is uh, yearning to have the faith upon god so uh, this is holy sonnet number 14 so number 14 suggests uh, this is the 14th poem and uh, yeah so it is written during the year 169 uh, to 1611, I told you that John Donne is a 16th century poet. And where Donne uh, meditates on God, death, holy God, divine love and faith. So it calls three person God. So three person God means God, uh, the Father, uh, Son, Jesus, and uh, the Holy Ghost. That means death. So these have been, uh, these three characters has been taken as uh, the Holy Trinity, so which is, uh, which is usually uh, spoken in uh, Christianity. Yeah, so uh, the, 
the three person god is that and uh, here uh, let's point holy son of 14 comes later in the series and depicts a speaker's personal crisis of faith that is the most important thing throughout the poem we can see his personal crisis of faith uh, he wants to he's having a fervent desire to be attached to god so he is asking now you are uh, dealing with me asking from the god actually appealing maybe uh, sometimes it's like a command he's telling that uh, you are uh, you are treating me in a more pleasant manner you are just uh, uh, you are uh, treating me in a very uh, soft manner but i want you to treat me in a rather violent manner and uh, then uh, you can uh, then only you can uh, attack me and uh, make me a new person or remake me yeah right then uh, next point this sonnet is an in, uh, intimate and unconventional portrait of speaker longing for faith because we see a lot of metaphysical conceits there and uh, we also uh, get to know that there are some unusual things so usually uh, people uh, people are pleading for uh, the pleading for god asking uh, for something when they are really uh, like uh, disturbed or when they are having problems something like that but in this poem now usually we don't ask harsh things from god so that is why we call this is unconventional it is a kind of unconventional portrayal because the longing for faith and uh, now usually we don't ask faith from god right we have faith on god and we then we ask some other things from god uh, just to fulfill our desire but here in this poem the unconventional thing is the poet is asking faith from the god so that is the most important part there well um and uh, next point the speaker is asking god along with jesus the holy ghost together uh, they are the trinity that makes up the christian three person god to enter his heart and to fulfill his longing for faith enter he, he he doesn't ask anything else he asks to enter my heart and uh, remake me having faith on you i need to have faith on you he's having a fervent desire right and the other important thing here is when we talk about the structure of this poem it is written in uh, the meter there is iambic pentameter so uh, now usually iambic pentameter means there is a there is a iamb you know about here this pentameter there is an iamb and syllable and that means there are sound units and uh, uh, so penta means five so five sound units are there and uh, we call the meter means the beats or the rhythm so here iambic in a iambic pentameter usually we find uh, unstressed syllable and a stressed syllable unstressed and stressed so i have given uh, the example here uh, so um, yeah so iambic pentameter i have given here as yet but not so unstressed and stressed right as yet but not stressed come stressed come after unstressed right but in the poem we find some deviations as well now if we say that it is iambic pentameter uh, the the whole poem is in this uh, meter uh, it it should it should run in the same manner now usually a uh, john dunn's poem uh, having this iambic pentameter pattern uh the the rhyme or the meter 
but we also see some deviations from this meter right for example the first word there itself if you go to the column batter batter so it is a stress syllable comes first and unstressed syllable comes after okay so there are some deviations like that and the poet has used those deviations purposely actually because now this is now uh, in the first word itself we find the deviation from iambic pentameter that's because the poet wants to highlight this word better so he asked a harsh he requests something harsh from the god so to highlight that word he has used uh, he has used a deviation and uh, some deviations have been used uh, in order to keep the rhythm of the poem not the rhyme rhythm of the poem uh, in a uh, to maintain the rhythm of the poem uh, and however uh, i will tell you that there are some deviations like this and uh, those deviations have been used to highlight the certain aspects and certain uh, things maybe the metaphysical concepts and all these things so however as a whole we take that uh, this poem is uh, very iambic pentameter the style of iambic pentameter right okay so i will uh, go through the poem once uh, and we'll let you know uh, those who were in my class last week uh, i did the first stanza but i'm going to revise that as well uh, because there are so many new ones so oh well i'm going to uh, read the poem first so batter my heart you was in bad for you as yet but now breathe shine and seek to me that i may rise and stand over for me but then your force to break no burn and make me i like and you you so town to another dew labor to at you but all to no end reason your wisery in me me should defend but is captivated and proves weak for on Yet, dearly I love you, and would be loved fain. But am betrothed unto your enemy, devoutly untie, and break that knot again. Take me to you, imprison me, for I, except you and Crowley, never shall be free. no ever chase except you ravish me well so this is the poem and uh, oh right so um yeah so i have uh, here the first line has been explained here so it says batter my heart three person bot for you as you uh, as yet but not brave shine and seek to men okay so the word batter batter means to slam or slam means to hit or uh, hit or strike violently on something so uh batter my heart the word batter is an allusion it is batter batter now you know uh, in medieval times uh those war period uh there was a tool called battering ram which is used uh, in the uh, yeah which is used in the warfare and uh, with this battering ram the word batter has come this battery ram has been used to break down the fortress doors the uh, the castle doors uh, so he is asking now see how harsh this request is now we are uh, battering the metal doors so maybe very heavy and very uh, strong things 
but heart is a very soft thing, right? But the poet is asking better my heart. So break my heart and enter into it. Yeah, three person God for you as yet, but not breathe your yet. Breathe, shine, seek to men. All these words are very soft words, right? So here I have written the better as an illusion. Better goes back to the medieval times. Uh, there the kings uh, broke the door of a fortress or castle. They used a tool called battering ram. So the battering ram is with a wooden handle and a sharp end of a metal end of a uh, metal end. So that has been used to put down the doors, uh, to break the doors. So, however, uh, here the God, three, four, God of Holy Trinity is there with three person God. And the thing here is, done appear the God to be rather strict in attempting to enter his heart. So, now, uh, what God was doing, uh, uh, what God was doing was, uh, he was entering to the heart in a very softer way. Breathing, shine, the words mending. Those words are very soft words, not harsh words. So earlier, uh, this uh, God was doing this. God was entering to the heart of the poet in this manner. But now here we can see the poet is asking to batter his heart. So indirectly compare heart. To a fortress. The heart for, fortress is uh, non living and very, uh, it's a harsh sort of thing. But heart is a very uh, soft and a gentle thing. But uh, the God asking, the poet is, uh, yeah, the poet is uh, requesting to act to his heart, attack his heart in a harsh manner, in a, in a violent manner. So, uh, yeah, so and um, here I have written in red color here. So far, you have tried to know me politely and with gentle breath and shown your light to fix me. So earlier you tried to fix me, but it was done in a very softer manner, uh, like the breath, the gentle breath. You have, uh, you have uh, passed your gentle breath towards me. And you have shown your light to fix me, to mend me. But it was not, uh, it was not successful. It was in vain. So, uh, yeah. So it was in, it was in vain. And uh, he's telling, so he is asking to uh, enter him in a uh, harsh manner, in a violent manner. So uh, the same thing is here. Oh. And the other thing is, there is another technique here in three person God. Three person God. So this is, you can see there is an omission. We call it elision. Elision. When, when you omit some words and uh, shorten the form, we call it uh, elision. Now here we can see the word or oh, uh, the three person God. So here actually now usually this elision has been used to uh, maintain the rhythm or the uh, meter of a uh, poem. But here actually this three person God is used in the, in that purpose as well. But mostly it has used to add some more power to the image. The three person God it is adding some more power to the image of the God. Yeah, so that is, uh, and you also see uh, the same technique elision in the third line as well. When you say overthrow, it is also used to uh, highlight the confusion of the poet, the speaker. Uh, so that is also the same technique. 
that. And then uh, we'll move to the next slide. Yeah, here I have uh, mentioned it. Just to maintain the rhythm of uh, the meter, elision. So emphasize the power of the God, the image of the God. And here you have the same thing, overthrow, overthrow, elision, the same technique. Overthrow me, confused, disturbed state of the speaker because nobody is asking from the God to throw me away, overthrow me. Right? So that is a kind of a, a, a thing. And it also used to, uh, this elision has been also used to tell, uh, to maintain the rhythm of the uh, poem as well as uh, it is uh, emphasizing the uh, it emphasizes the uh, confused, disturbed state of the speaker. And there, uh, I have written, I have told you that there are some deviations from the yambic pentameter. And uh, here, I have mentioned about the deviation here. Yambic pentameter deviated from the yambic pentameter, stressed and answered. Now, usually the yambic pentameter was with unstressed and stressed, right? But here you can see the word battle, stressed and unstressed, right? Yeah. So there, the poet tries to signify that uh, uh, he wants the God to enter his heart in an unusual way, deviating from the usual conventional. So we can say, can see the significance of this deviation as well. Uh, now, he has used such words I told you, he has used uh, this deviation, the deviations from the usual meter being unusual, then it suggests that he requests, he appeals from the God to enter into his heart in a more powerful manner, uh, without being conventional. Now, the conventional method of entering the heart is uh, breathing softly and shine, uh, showing the light and making or mending the people. But uh, now this deviation is used because he wants to tell that uh, you need to enter into the heart in an unconventional and uh, unusual manner deviating from the usual conventional manner. And you can see how he asked the violent manner is there in the fourth scene. Yeah, quote from my writing there. Yeah, elision means, I told you, elision means omitting some of the words or phrase. So here you can see three person, he is missing there. And overthrow, overthrow there is the, over is not there. B is not there, so that is the elision. Some letters or words, omitting some letters or words. All right, I hope uh, those who are writing now finished writing, okay. Right. Uh, okay, so in this, so I have highlighted here some of the words, mend and make me now. Uh, if you talk about the next two lines, uh, the poet is asking, yeah, the, 
that I may rise and stand overthrow me, bend your force to break. No, he suggests that uh, you have so many force. Why don't you use this force? Now, in a way, uh, the poet is asking, why don't you use this force on me? Use this force on me and break me, blow me, burn me. Right? So he's asking the God to be violent. That is what. That is why we say this is very unconventional, and the metaphysical comes in once there. Right. So mend and make me. You can see mending is the softer way that usually the God is doing. But now he asks a violent way. So he asks to make me by breaking, blowing, and burning me. So harsh, very harsh. So uh, there. Um, can we find the parallel structure in the uh, parallel structure? I don't get it, uh, but there are paradoxes. I will tell you how it goes, to, how in the same line there are paradoxes are there, right? We will uh, find them later on. Okay. And uh, men and make me so i have written here speaker asking god to treat him violently and to remake him as a new person remake him not to uh, have some uh, uh, have some small changes in me but to remake me so that is the power lies there right that the, the power lies there and uh, this can be interpreted in two ways here i have written uh, making this making this is very significant uh, those who write can write it uh, those who want to write those who want to have the small book you can write because uh, we can interpret this making or the remaking in two ways right so uh, first listen to me now here i have written as the first way he asked to be born again, where he asked to have a moment of religious epiphany. Religious epiphany. So, epiphany means an illuminating realization or discovery result of a personal feeling. Illumination, a kind of illumination. And remember, when we talk about this epiphany, there is an illusion as well. But we don't uh, significantly use it there because the word epiphany is not given in the poem. But we can understand that by this making, by this making process or the remaking process, uh, the poet is asking for an epi epiphany, right? So when it comes to Christianity, epiphany means uh, it's like a it's an annual Christian fiesta. And uh, they are the appearance of appearance appearance of the Jesus Christ uh, to the Magi on the twelfth day after Christmas. So they are celebrating this event as an epiphany, right? Uh, as a uh, uh, and uh, yeah, it is uh, yeah. Uh, the meeting is going to end. You have to log into the meeting again with the same day. So uh, Jesus Christ uh, is appearing to the Magi on the twelfth day of Christmas. That is uh, uh, that is actually uh, celebrated as telling uh, epiphany, right? So that is something else. But here we talk is what we talk here is this making progress. Maybe the first thing maybe he is asking from from the uh, God. To give him kind of a religious epiphany, illumination, a religious illumination, right? So he wants to recognize the power of God, but he worries that the only way God will get through him uh, by doing something violent and completely overthrowing him. Now, uh, the poet mentions here your force. So that suggests that. Uh, the God is having enough force to do these things. He he tells that the God is having uh, enough force, enough uh, strength to give uh, to touch him in a softer manner and also in a violent manner. So he is 